Hey everybody, welcome back to Feast and Farm Cooks. Today we're doing something a little more fun, a little special, and I'm taking your questions. So a couple of weeks ago on our community tab, I asked everybody what you had that you'd like me to answer for you, and I've collected all of those today, and we're gonna go over those and answer them. It could be anything from cooking to farming and health information, so let's get started. I've got my list right here. So first is Mystery World who asked, what's your take on a for a coffee lover with autoimmune disease? Is low acidic coffee better or cut the coffee out altogether? So first I'll say that if only coffee were the problem for autoimmune diseases, that would be so easy to fix. Coffee is probably not the cause of your autoimmune disease, nor is it really truly aggravating anything. Now, I have been taught that coffee, because of the caffeine, can be an irritant to the adrenal glands. And so because of that, it's something that we try to avoid for the most part when we have an autoimmune disease, just from that demand on the system. There's plenty of hot teas and other things you can drink instead, but coffee is something I would leave off, at least for a little while while you have an autoimmune disease, but you should work with your practitioner to find out if that's the best choice for you. All right, number two, Ted McCrimmon asks, what is your most favorite recipe to bake or cook when you're feeling down in the dumps? So for me, I don't, I try not to cook a lot from emotional standpoints and eat a lot of food just out of emotion. That's not a, ever really a super healthy habit to have. But I can tell you that I love to bake when I'm a little stressed out. And I'll usually do that and give it to everybody else to eat. Um, if I was gonna pick something that I love to make, the more complicated it is, the more I like doing it. So croissants are probably one of my favorite things to make. I know a couple summers ago, I spent about 24 hours on a batch of croissants just because I was irritated about something that was going on. And I certainly do like to get my hands in dough. That's always my favorite when I'm, when I'm stressing out. Okay, Batani Rose, she asks, what's the most difficult for you to make? I had to think about that a little while. I, my mom taught me that there's not anything that you don't you can't make if you have a recipe. And truly, I still kind of believe that. After running a food blog for a while, I've discovered that not everybody can do that. But if I had to pick something that I'm not good at, definitely some of the complicated candies, just because I don't have much of a desire to get into the super heavy sweets. Um, tempering chocolate, anything that requires a specific temperature and then reducing a temperature or bringing it to a certain one, like hard crack and soft crack stages and all, all that. Um, that wouldn't be my favorite. And then I'm still working on sourdough croissants. So I, I love bread, of course, and making all kinds, but sourdough for me is a particular love and croissants are tough. So I'm still practicing and perfecting my, my technique on those. Okay, Cade82 asks, I'd like to incorporate more honey into my cooking and baking. I know there are certain rules about using honey because it's a liquid. Are there any hints on how to do this more easily or is it trial and error? So it's not trial and error, thankfully. There are a lot of things you can do. The first thing with honey is that you have to remember that they have varying flavors. Some of them are very dark honeys and they have very bold, strong flavors. And if you choose a lighter one, it's not gonna have quite as much strength to it. It's also much sweeter than regular sugar. So you're gonna to wanna to reduce the amount of sugar in your recipe by one half to two thirds, what the original recipe called for. Then you're gonna to need to take out about a quarter of a cup of additional liquid from the recipe because honey is about 20% water. So reducing the liquid elsewhere in the recipe and then also adding just a pinch of baking soda to whatever you're baking will kind of help balance the pH because honey can be quite acidic. And then of course, turning down your oven temperature by about 25 degrees because honey in a recipe will cause whatever that baked good is to brown much more quickly. And you wanna reduce your oven temperature so that it bakes before it burns, all right? But other than that, it's really quite simple. If you have any other questions, make sure to let me know. Um, Josh Canley. What, was making videos and recipes always something you wanted to do? No. <laughs> I've always cooked and I've always enjoyed that. But as far as the video end of things, no. It was strictly a business decision from my food blog. So I run feastandfarm.com primarily. And I felt like branching into video was the next most logical thing to do. And I love helping people. So that part has never changed. But my, my true love was always being a nurse and, and caring for patients and doing those sorts of things. But I do truly love running the food blog and helping other people you know, live and be healthier. Do you have any suggestions on books, articles, or websites to find information on ingredients that they put into our food and its effects? I do have a few suggestions. So the first one is this book. And this is Nourishing Traditions. It was written by Sally Fallon, and it was the first book I read when I began my journey to real food. And to tell you the truth, I was really, really shocked about the things I learned in here. And 
I, I can't encourage you enough to take some time to read this one. It's, it's half cookbook, half reference book. So it's really not as big and thick as it seems like it is right here. Um, and I'll leave you a link to this in the description box. You can pick it up on Amazon. It's really, really, really foundational. Website wise, if you wanted to look at something, I, I like the food babe enough. Sometimes she's a little bit scary in the way she presents her information. So that might be something that you want to keep in mind as you read, you know, her information. But she's very, very passionate about what she does and I give her full credit, you know, for that. And then beyond that, a couple of other websites I've got on my list. Uh, Lisa Leak that runs 100 Days of Real Food, Nourishing Traditions, both of which are online that you can find wonderful healthy recipes on. Um, Carrie Vitt runs Deliciously Organic. It's another great one that's full of information health-wise and you know food-wise. And then there's another book that I love, and it sounds very dense, but it's called Vaccines, Autoimmunity in the Changing Face of Childhood Illness by Dr. Thomas Cowan, I do believe. And I'll leave you a link to that one too. It sounds terrible to read, it's not. It was actually another life changer for me, so I'll leave you a link to that one as well. And then let's see. Um, Batani Rose, she's back with another question. Do you cook outside during nicer weather? Sometimes we roast a hot dog, but beyond that, as far as doing a lot of open fire cooking or anything like that, no, I don't. Um, I could. I have um, a cook stove in another building here on the farm that I could use whenever I want to. Um, but as far as much beyond roasting a hot dog, we're not out there a whole lot. My grandmother didn't like anyone in her kitchen while she was cooking. How do you feel about your kitchen? I think, of course, if you're going to have your children learning to cook and loving food, they've got to be in the kitchen with you. If I'm busy and it's a busy weeknight and we have a lot of things going on, I would really prefer to just be in there by myself and slam it out and get it done and be finished. But when we have time, I absolutely want and welcome other people into my kitchen so that they can learn and enjoy food too. My kids grew up in the kitchen, so that's very important. Shannon Bumgarner. Um, what do you use to find out which foods are inflammatory other than Google? I'm very interested in what and how you substitute foods that are not inflammatory. So I wish that there were unbiased resources on the internet for you to find, and it's very difficult to do that. If you go and do a quick Google search, you're going to find one article that tells you one food is wonderful and another one that tells you how terrible it is for you and it's really really difficult to find anything that is unbiased sometimes if i'm doing a particular type of research i'll change my search engine to something like DuckDuckGo or another more neutral one because our information is filtered in this country and it's pretty tough to find what you need for that reason with my own health what I did was go back to what I call my God diet. It was very simple for me. I just decided that I wanted to eat food like God created it. So that's what I do. I don't question, is this inflammatory? Is it not inflammatory? My question is, was this made in a factory? Is this as close to it would have of how it would have been in nature or has it been modified? If it's in a box when it shouldn't be, if it's shelf stable and it shouldn't be, if it's you know full of information or full of ingredients that have made it different than how it would have come from the plant or the tree or the animal, then it's off my list. So I just do that and I, I just cannot spend too much time digging around on the internet trying to find things because it's just too hard. And it's worked for me that way. It's just I just have to keep it simple. Okay. Um, Russ Hall, what farm animals do you raise? Right now we just have registered Black Angus cattle and our dogs. And if you can count kids as farm animals, maybe we can stick them in there too. Uh, we usually have chickens. I'm, I'm off on the chickens right now while my health is recovering. But once I'm stronger, I would go to, like to go back to raising pastured chickens so that we can have some that are truly out on grass all the time and the eggs are healthier. Hope P, do you take supplements? And have you tried making your own kimchi? I do take supplements. I take a variety of supplements actually. And they're not something I talk about here on the channel because they're very specific to my body. What you need is gonna be different than what I need. And I don't like to promote things to people without first knowing if it's something you, your body actually needs. But yes, I do, I take, right now we're doing a, a heavy metal detox uh, protocol on me. And so I'm taking in the mornings and in the afternoons, I take about, uh, six or eight different supplements, but they're all very, very simple. The rest of what I do for my body comes from my food because you simply cannot supplement your way to good health. It has to be done through your food. So that's what I do. And then do I make my own kimchi? Um, no, <laughs> it's on the list. I haven't gotten time for that yet. And you have to really pick and choose, you know, what you're 
lifestyle and your stress levels and all of those things will allow you to do. So I'm still buying my kombucha, my kimchi, and you know some of my fermented foods, but it's absolutely on the list as something I'm going to pick up and do later. Okay, that's the entire list, guys. So if you have any other questions for me, I would love to do this again. Leave me a comment below this video and ask me anything you'd like. We could do this live. We could even do it another recording. So let me know how you'd like to have the next session, and I'll see you there. Have a great day.